All right, welcome back to the shop. As you might be able to hear, I have a bit of a congestion situation happening. A little bit of a snot, snot. Um, okay, so before I do much more to the actual parts, um, I've got the bracing shaped, I've got the top and the back glued up, the book match is good, but I need to get a couple of things now. I need to get a bending form, I need to get a mold, I need to get um, the radiusing, I, I want to make a new uh, radiusing, fretboard radiusing jig, uh, because I sent Brandon mine. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do first is glue up a couple of slabs of half inch MDF that I'll use to cut out the mold for. So I'll have an inch and a half thick mold. Um, and so that's going into the vacuum bag. That's why you see the vacuum bag out. The, um, the other things I need, I need to get, I need to build a side bender and things like that. So I've got, I, we're in the middle of jig stuff now. So I'm just, just going to bear with me for a couple of videos. We're going to have a few jigs that have to get built. Um, a few more jigs that have to get built. I did a couple without showing you and I kind of feel dumb about it. So I'm going to undo that and uh, I'm going to stop doing that and I'm going to start showing you the whole process because if you don't have a jig and you got to make one, that's going to stop your build. So that's where I am. I don't have a mold for the sides, for the outer sides. I don't have a radiusing jig. I don't have a side bending. So we're going to get those things going. So. Uh, right now, I'm just going to glue up a slab OMDF, nice thick inch and a half slab, and I'll use that to make my mold out of. So this is just going to be a boring bit of slather on some glue, throw it in the vacuum bag. Um, I threw a few dowel, I threw a couple of holes in the corners with some dowels that will help align them so that when they go in the bag, they're not sliding all over the damn place. Um, and we're just going to get after this. So I'm going to grab some, I'm going to grab a bunch of glue and some sort of spreading mechanism, probably my brayer, <coughs> and we'll go after it. So, bring you back. We are set up now, I think. Hopefully I don't get glue all over my saw. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this winging it, which probably means I'm gonna be cussing here in a second. But that's okay. Let's just take my good old Type-On 2 here. Get some of this dried crap off of there. Okay. I'm just gonna lop on a bunch. Try to spread it a little. That's probably more than enough. We'll see. So the timer starts now. That is in well enough. Grab a little bit of the little bit of the strip. Oh, this one's fine. Just slide it on into there and close up the bag. This doesn't take too much time, hopefully. Let it dry. Throw the bag closed here. Hold on to it. There you go. Okay, a little bit of pressure. Bring on the pressure. pull out of there. It's going to be evacuating for a while. That's what was interesting. It's got a lot of air in there, so...
That's the first time I've had to do that. shut that off. Yeah, my system over here is not holding vacuum suddenly. I think my Mac valve is messing up or something. I'm not sure. Hopefully there's enough vacuum in there that I can diagnose what's up with this. Tool's breaking. We'll figure it out. Damn it. Phew! Okay, that was nothing. It was a minor problem. A little simple fix. The There's a check valve in here that keeps the vacuum from leaking out once the valve shuts off, once the Mac valve shuts off. This check valve right here was stuck open, so it just kept cycling. Pull it apart, blow it out. There must have been some crud in there, which is bound to happen. There's not a lot of good filtration in here, so yeah. So that was all it was. It just needed a little, little chooch, clean it out. I'll probably order another one just in case that one is on the fritz or on its way out. But we're pressed. Let that dry for a couple hours, um, and then we'll come back and I'll start cutting it out. But, A for vacuum. Hey, hey, I like vacuum. Anyway, press is fixed. Very minor problem. All right, so the other piece we're going to do, while that's drying in the vacuum bag, we're going to do the radiusing, gay, the troughs, the fretboard radiusing thing I had that I gave to Brandon, that I sold to Brandon. And so this... It's just going to be four, I think five troughs actually, that um, conform to the radius of the various fretboard radii that are out there. I think it's a seven and a quarter, nine and a half, ten, twelve, and fourteen, maybe. I forget now, but it's all the ones that I found that I would want at least early on. And I can cut more if I decide I want another. But I'm just sticking this down with some. Some of the double stick. Well, we might as well get that booting up here while we're at it. And uh, I'm just going to stick this down onto the table. This is just going to be a 3D tool path. There's no uh, no profiling or anything like that, or pockets or anything like that. And I'm not even roughing. I'm just going to run the final because it's not very deep for any of them. And the half inch cutter will take that new no problem. Aim for semi-parallel with the x-axis. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna go find my mallet. Where's my mallet? It's right there. Um, yeah, so we'll get the keyboard out too while we're at it. And get Mach 3 going. And get a mallet. On this one, since I'm cutting the entire surface away, I'm unconcerned. That should go a zero locations. That should go nowhere. Put this, I'll put it back over there. Probably want it later. All right, <clears throat> now we'll go get our G-code, get everything positioned, get the cutter in, and we'll start running it.
All right, I'm gonna call that one done. Um, the double stick tape lost its grip and the corners started to come up, so it was cutting deeper out here than I'd liked. Then I started pushing on it and I made the levels wrong. But honestly, 22, yeah, this will be about 21 and a half, 22 inches long when I cut it clear, so that's plenty. That's enough to, to work with. Um, the surface is a little ribbed, a little ridged, ridged ridges. Ruffles have ridges um, because uh, the step over, I did the fast step over, so it's a 32nd of an inch each pass. And there's some bumps, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape that clear, um, nice and smooth. The radius is gonna be plenty, plenty fine and plenty accurate. Just gotta, just gotta get enough pressure under there to pry it up. That is really down though, isn't it? There we go. Now we got it lift. Slowly. Yeah. What? Well, it was definitely not going to come off, but it was generally lifting in the corners. So, yeah, it's not a big deal. We can work with it. So I always clamp them down when I'm using them anyway. So, not a huge thing. All right. So this one is done. I'm going to put another one on here another project on here uh, next after I pull it out of the vacuum bank so that'll be for the molds but this goes over to the table saw to get cut clean and I think we're pretty much smooth enough here not too worried all right cool bring you back in a second let's go look at the vacuum bag all right this has been in the bag for two and a half three hours so that should be plenty of clampage time We'll just uh, set that away there, open her up and pull the, pull the slab on out. It has its home here. Oh, you're going to be a pain, aren't you? Because I got to get over that way to do it. Go like this. How about that, huh? Huh? I showed it. Got our big old slab here to pull out. Our slab's an inch and a half thick now, and it looks well adhered, which is good. This will become the molds for it. Yeah. That will do very nicely. Pretty solid all around. Okay, so we're going to put this on the CNC and get it cutting out its templates. We'll bring it back in a minute. All right, we are now set with a V-bit, ready to mark the lettering, because I like doing the lettering thing on my templates and stuff. It's kind of handy. Um, and we're just ready to do the V-curving first, and then I will do the actual cutting out after that. So well, let's load that G-code and... Get it ready. Here we go. Alright, that was quick. Now for a bit change. Re-zero the Z. We'll do our cutouts. Ah, oh, my yard guys are here. I could hear some noise outside. I was what? What the heck's that noise? All right. Da -da -do 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 -do. Da -da 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 -da. This is the boring process of changing a bit. Yeah. There we go. <coughs> Put this in. Da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. I'm to it enough to grab it. Cinch down. This doesn't take that long. You zero the Z and that's about it, because the X and Y have already been done by the V bit. To raise you up a little more so I can get the shroud underneath you. <coughs> okay. Let's 
confirm that after I zero as well. I want to double check that I'm not going too far, <coughs> too far. Um, when it goes to cut full depth, I don't want to be pushing this thing into the top surface. So I want to double check that here in a second. I'll show you how in just a moment. Slip our paper underneath it. Drop wrap it. Get in there. Yeah, that'll do. Drop that, call that Z0. Page up. And now we're going to head this away. And I'm going to drop that Z down all the way yeah the bit got lowered yeah, I'm still okay with it though I think I will check over here <coughs> just to be sure because I don't want to have the I don't want to have the dust shroud giving me troubles yeah, we're getting really close. Yeah, I know, it's touching. All right, that ain't gonna work. That's too much. I think what I'll do is re-Z. So it's just a case of, I'm gonna put the tool out a little further. I'm just gonna extend the, just a half inch. It's got a lot, of a lot of power, or a lot of strength. So what I'm gonna do is just extend the bit out another quarter inch or so. Redo the Z, zero, and, uh, make it so that it won't be so risky. Yeah, we've got an inch and a quarter or so of shank in there, so we can we can stand to lose a little. And have that stick down a little bit. Like so. There's lots of tool in the in the collet yet. There, there. Now we go back and Z back and re-zero the Z here. As I can get the dang wrenches to go on the way they're supposed to. Okay, put this back on. Go back over to roughly zero X and Y. We'll do this again one more time. I want to make sure we're safely zeroing here. That sheet of papa underneath it. Too far? Yeah. Ooh, too far. There we go. Okay. Ooh, very close. One more thou. Yeah, that'll do. One, two, three, four. That is our new Z0. Go back up. Let's get back way over here then. Harden that noise over there. Blower. And then we'll drop this down to roughly about the eighth that it would leave. Yeah, now we're good. Now we're plenty. Back over here. Go back to zero. We'll load up our decode for the profiles. Profiles, profile, 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 profile. That, that looks wrong. Oh, you know what happened. I know what happened. Hold on a second. All right, so what happened was the V-carving I did was from code I generated this morning with a different shape blank. So those are all in the wrong place. Um, I regenerated the G-code, but I didn't copy it over to this machine. This is just a case of keeping your crap straight. Um, I've decided I don't need them to, I like the lettering, but it's a nice to have, and now they've already got numbers in them, there's already engraving. I could flip it over, I suppose, but eh, it's fine, and I'm just going to go with the cutout now. Um, I'm not going to bother with uh, messing around with any more of the, with the lettering and all that stuff, so we'll just do the cutouts. I'm going to turn on the vacuum and have at it, so here we go.
All right, so that uh, did the cutting. Now we just have to ply this, ply, ply this thing off. We have to pry this thing off of here somewhat gently because now things are a little less sturdy with one another. Just gradually grab a little bit off at one end at a time here. Maybe we'll do this sturdier end first. Maybe not. <laughs> It's on there good, because I didn't want it to move. Well, it didn't move. No, it won't move. I just got to get a little bit in here. I, think I might go after it with some shimmies. Let's see about tapping that in. I think we can get this one to go in. Maybe. a gentle lifter of this just get a little crazy and this will help yeah, I can hear it I can hear it peeling Let's see if I can't squeeze another shim under this shim There we go. Nothing to it. Nothing a little wedge action can't help. Ow, that was my finger. So now I just have to take this over to the bandsaw. The usual cut out the profiles and then flush trim them with the sides. Nothing to it. And away we go. Off to the bandsaw. All right. Oof, this is heavy. All right, they're all flushed up now, and in theory, putting these two together gives me my outer mold, and this should flop around in there. Hey, hey, hey. Should be about a hunt, an eighth of an inch around the whole outer. That's perfect. It's exactly as I designed it. Someday I'll stop being surprised when it works when I expect it to. Okay, so that's those. These little guys, I believe, have to be oriented just right and this one like so or does it go better this way looks like it goes better this way all right and then this little guy goes up in oh this is a uh, yeah this goes here somewhere in the somewhere in the arch of the there it is no no, that's definitely not it. Like this now. So there's an arch in here. I think it goes just about like that. I wonder why there's a flat-ish spot there. I think this one has it too, huh? Basically, we're going for just wherever that fits it vertically. Like that. And then this little guy goes in here. Oh, yeah, there is a there is a gap, that's true. These don't go nested in. There's a gap, so. And then this here goes like this uh, here and here like that. Yeah, yes, just like that. And then like that. And that'll push those into those places. I need to get some turnbuckles, but I wanted to get a measurement here. I need a turnbuckle that can do, well, there's a gap of 10 inches between those two. There's a gap of, oops, hold on to that. 
There's a gap of five and a half, five and three quarters inches there. And let's just say like this. This would be six and three quarters, five and three quarters, and ten and a quarter. Something like that. Something like that. But you get the idea. Now I'll just get some turnbuckles that spready clamps. And that'll be how I can hold my outer mold stuff in. The other piece I need to do is get this so that it is stinched together somehow nicely. Probably a hinge or um, just a couple of bolts maybe. I'm unsure on that. It could just be C-clamps for all I care at the moment. Um, but that is my outer mold. Ta-da! Outer mold done. Um, the next thing we got to do... I think once I figure out my I'm gonna go to the hardware store later and pick up some turnbuckles to make these work sorry I forgot to hit record what I've done so far and I'll do it again on the other end is I clamped these together so they were perfectly flush where I wanted them and I drilled with my lamp drill quarter inch hole all the way through these two blocks together clamped clamped tightly together so that they stay aligned and then this, yeah, this will poke through. And then I'll put a, I'll put a lock nut on this side just to keep them in place. And then we can we can just cinch these together nicely. Wasn't the straightest drilling, but you know, did the job. Okay, so I can, I've got a little wiggle room here. I can fudge these together nicely here like so yeah. and that'll just stay snug like that and then we can do the other side and I'll repeat what I did off camera earlier so I just kept them flat together and I'm aligning these edges too and I've got to sand the ends so that they're flush enough to get flush nicely, so that they're flat enough. And then I just take a clamp, and we just above the top of it area, just about, just up at near the top, so it's out of the way. And then I just tap on it to get these faces aligned the way I'd like them before I cinch it down nicely. Okay, now we can cinch on it nice. That'll hold it while we drill. So will the other side being bolted. It slipped on me here. Are we staying flush? We are staying flush. Okay. Alright, and we just flip it up here. And we get on it with the drill. I'm gonna I'm gonna see about drilling at it. Um, yeah, it's gonna be it's going to be a weird angle, so I'm going to move to the vise over here, I think. Yeah, this will work better, because then I can hold the drill plumb and have a lot less chance of not getting it smooth or straight. There we go. That'll work better. And we'll get our drill. <coughs> and just drill straight down. Uh, we'll go for about in the middle of the, th the center ply. Pull out our waist. It's also quite handy that this is edge grain of the MDF because edge grain MDF won't tear out the way like face grain stuff does. So it's a lot less risky. So we'll just take another washer. And because I f have this weird obsession about it, I wanted the bolt head on either on each end to be on the same side. And we'll just put this lock nut on. And we have ourselves at least the outer mold complete. it. 
nice and smoothly firmly done one um, Martin double O mold ready to be used as soon as I get the turnbuckles so, and I picked up some turnbuckles that we're gonna get set into these I don't know what I'll call them shoes dogs I don't know what to call those things form bits these things um, so I'm just basically gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna center them because I think center is fine so I'm just gonna take their lengths this one should be three inches three four inches long so four we'll just do a I'm gonna do it above on the top here four will just be a two inch mark here nothing to it and then I'll just stick this one next to it and mark the same location. Just basically center them. <clears throat> and to get the turnbuckles inside, um, they're going to be down in this region somewhere. Down in here somewhere. Not up here. Down here. But there's going to need to be a pin to hold it. And then I'll cut a groove that will allow that to fall into it and then align with the pin. So I'm going to take my square here and just mark a line <coughs> excuse me mark a line up that way so I know where to drill and do the same here and then we'll do these these should be three inches then and so I'm just going to put this in there so that there's enough room to get a pin down inside of it I'm not even sure how the pin is only there to keep it from pulling out. It's not going to take any of the clamping force. So I just need it in far enough to hold on to it. Okay. Off we go to the drill press to drill a half dozen holes. Okay, now it's just the simple act. I, I did take and center punch them. I'm just out of habit. Um, just simple act of now. We'll drill for quarter inch holes here. Just get it on the center punch mark drill on through. Alright, back over to the table saw now. We have inch and a half, we're actually a little more than an inch and a half, we're inch and inch and nine sixteenths yeah pretty close to but we're basically going for centering this groove so we're just going to cut a groove um, first thing I want to do is get my height and it's going to be a little ways up we're going to get past the hole for sure we've got to get enough for the bar stock to fit so we're probably going to go in about an inch I'd say somewhere in that vicinity ought to be enough and then we're going to try to center it up here. So we're going to be at about the, in the vicinity of the three quarter mark. Ought to get us close. And what I'm going to do is I've got two different sized turnbuckles. One's got a smaller, uh, whatever the loop is. Um, this is smaller than this one. I'm going to get them all to this size first and then I can just expand the, the slot for the others. Because I want it centered, I'm going to be doing two passes for every cut. So I'm going to do it this way, then I'll flip it around, and then I'll do it this way, and that'll keep it centered inside the, inside the block. Um, I'm going to grab a push stick because we're getting a little close to the fingertips here, I think. And uh, just take it easy, go slowly, take careful, and we might use two push sticks, we'll see. Yeah, this feels alright. Okay, we're good to go, we're going to just <clears throat> get after this and gradually cut a, cut a groove in each of these, in the back sides. So, beautiful music for you. Okay, I think we got them all the right size. I think they're deep enough. We're about to find this out here real quick. Um, so I'm going to take, these are easy because I know these are right. Now we just want to make sure we're, I want to orient them in a way that keeps every, when I want to tighten, they all move the same direction. 
I don't want to have one set go one direction and one set go the other. Okay, and just sit those in. Take ourselves a dowel. Should just push, push right on through, just like that. And this side too. And these are through holes there. See, now that keeps them together. Now I should, in theory, be able to do this and lock them in. Oh, yes. Precisely as I planted. Cool. Okay, I'll show you some better pictures of that in a second. The question I've got is whether or not I got deep enough for these guys to do the same. So this one will go here. I want to make sure this one's deep enough. I'm not sure I can get the dowel through or not. I think I can. Oh, yeah. No problem. Oh, this one didn't get cut all the way. This one missed a cut, I think. Yeah, this one's still skinny. We gotta go back and cut this. Hold on. All right, this one's been fixed. There we go. Yeah. All right. Let's just drop a dowel through it. That one is snug, but it still does its job. It's allowing the pivot, which is perfectly fine. It doesn't need a lot of pivot space. It just needs some. And it'll just keep doing that. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And then this just gets put in and smooshes. Perfect. Cool. This one. These look like they've been cut well enough. We'll see. Yep. Put this one on this side. And just tap it in. And this side. This works really well, actually. Okay. Got a little pivot room. It isn't the fanciest of pivot room. Ooh, we're splitting it. Yikes, we don't want to do that. Huh. Yeah, I've got a split now. Yeah, I'm going to glue this back together. Shoot. So, I'm going to glue this back together with the dowel as my locating point here. Dang. So there's just too much, too much pressure in there for it to pivot, because I don't know that the hole was fully deep enough or something it split. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this back together real fast and then we'll uh, make that hole a bit wider, I think. Just get a clamp and a glue. Sometimes we have to fix things. How you doing? You look alright. Yeah, I think I just didn't get this hole or this slot quite as well as it should have been. We'll just get, get a little glue on it. Be no problem. She'll be good as ne. Make sure I'm going to get adequate squeezing out here. Didn't get enough glue over there, I don't think. Drop just a tiny bit right there. Seems good now, yeah. Got enough glue everywhere? Maybe not everywhere. That ought to be enough. In fact, it's probably too much. There, get a little squeezing of it together. There we are. Now I'm getting squeeze out where I'd like to see squeeze out. This could have just gone into the ice, <coughs> too. All right, let that dry. Clear up some glue squeeze out here. Just the big stuff. Yeah, I'll just let that dry and I'll recut this slot. This one was a little snug and I tried to force it. I probably shouldn't have. In fact, maybe I'll pull all these out and recut them all a bit deeper just so that I don't risk this anymore. Yeah, what I will do. Tis what I will do. Pop them out of there, though. <laughs> All right, I'll get these cleared out. We'll fix it.
All right, I've widened and de, or not widened, I've deepened the slots. The one that I had to glue up is done and fine. It's working all right. Um, I've deepened the slots and I put some cork on the faces. So now all I gotta do is drive in the, drive in the turnbuckles of the way. Be sure I don't confuse my directionals, directionalities. Now we can drive some new pins in. And that was not the glued up one, but that one's now really floppy, lots of room to move around. So that's exactly what our trouble was. Okay, I'm gonna try to be gentle here, like so. Yeah, that one's good now. Yeah, that'll do. And while the contact adhesive on the cork lining is okay, I don't necessarily trust it fully. So I would like to put these in where they are going and let the clamping forces do what they do. That ought to hold them in there. That's just to hold the cork on, kind of itself clamping. Um, and then we'll do these guys. And I'm just making sure that twisting downward does the da does the job of tightening. And then we we'll just pop these through. And pop this through, and that'll hold them in. Now our mold has. Clampings, like so. Boom. Not bad, eh? That'll do, huh? Give that a little snook, a little snitch, snooching. That needs to be a little straighter up and down here. There we go. Yeah, that'll do. And that'll hold the cork on while the, the adhesive has a chance to settle in. There we go. We've got our outer mold now. Cool.